Dr. Shabir, we are looking at fantastical stories in the Quran commentaries. And now we're going to look at chapter 3, which talks about Jesus resurrecting people from the dead. And Dr. Shabir, maybe you can tell us a little bit about what that verse says and what the commentaries have related. Yeah, so Surah 3, verse number 49, uh, says basically that uh, Jesus, uh, in his words, uh, was given uh, certain permission by, uh, by God to perform miraculous deeds, including uh, healing uh, the blind, curing the leper, raising the dead back to life. Uh, the words there in Arabic, were, and I give uh, life to the dead by the uh, permission of God. Uh, so naturally, that creates a curiosity in Muslims to find out uh, when did Jesus raise the dead back to life? Because not everybody can do this. Uh, you know, let, tell us the story. And there are stories in the Gospels uh, to which we can turn. In the Gospels of Matthew and Mark, there is a story about uh, Jesus healing Jairus' daughter. Um, Jairus was a leader and his daughter was uh, at the point of death, according to uh, Mark. Uh, but uh, according to Matthew, had just died. But in any case, by the time Jesus got there, that girl was definitely dead. But Jesus assured the crowd the girl was only sleeping, and he did what he had to do in privacy, and uh, the girl was brought back to life. Um, in, in Luke's Gospel, there is a story that there was a boy already being in his coffin or on, his, uh, on, the, on the carrying palanquin, uh, being taken to uh, his uh, burial, uh, and he was the son of a widow. Uh, but Jesus had compassion on the widow and brought the son back to life. In John's Gospel, we have even more time transpiring between the death of the person and the resurrection, uh, or, or the resuscitation uh, that Jesus enacts. Uh, this was Lazarus' story. In John's Gospel, Lazarus has been dead for four days, so his sister even says, by now he must, you know, his body must be smelling. Um, and rotting, but uh, Jesus nonetheless uh, gives the command and Lazarus comes out of his uh, grave with his wrapping sheets and all. Um, uh, but still, in, in, in the Tafsir of Al-Qurtubi, of which I have an English translation of one portion here, um, uh, so we, we read that um, people, uh, according to this Muslim imagination, uh, people uh, questioned um, Jesus. Well, you know, all of these uh, resurrections you have done, they're of people who recently died. So mm -hmm. maybe they were just in a state of stupor. Maybe they weren't really dead. Mm -hmm. uh, so can you, like, show us what you can do? Is there, you know, an instance where that you, can you bring back somebody from a long time ago? So going back as uh, almost as far back as the names we know from, from the patriarchs, uh, the Shem uh, or, or Sam, the, the son of uh, Noah, uh, comes into vogue here and uh, his uh, grave is pointed out and uh, Jesus commands him and uh, he comes back to life. Uh, so uh, they ask him, why is your hair white when there was no white hair uh, in your time? Meaning, as, as, as we know from, from the narrative in the Soyuti's uh, Adur al-Mansur, mm -hmm. because he died young. He was mm -hmm. a youth, so he didn't have gray hair at that time. So how did your gray hair come turn white? Uh, so he answered, um, uh, Spirit of Allah, he's addressing Jesus as Ruhullah, uh, which is a Quranic term for, for Jesus. Uh, Spirit of, of Allah, you summoned me, and I heard a voice saying, respond to the Spirit of Allah. I thought that the day of rising had come, and terror, uh, and, it, and terror of that turned my hair white. So this is an Islamic trope. It's, it's known in Islamic tradition that the terror of the Day of Judgment will be such that, you know, Yajalul uh, Wildan Ashiba. It will make even the young boys, uh, you know, get mm -hmm. gray hair. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, you, you can see that uh, the, the story has this Islamic flavor. It's, it's Muslims thinking this uh, through. Mm -hmm. and, and discussing, like, what about Jesus? Uh, could he have resurrected somebody from the past? And then it is also added here that whenever Jesus wanted to resurrect some, somebody from the dead, he would first pray two rakats of prayer, which is what Muslims would do if, you know, we, we face some need, which is called hajjah in, in Arabic. So he would offer two rakats of salatul hajjah, so, uh, and then you would beseech God based on these performance of the two rakats. And then, more than this, uh, he would first recite Surah Al-Mulk, the 67th chapter, uh, and, and then in the second uh, cycle of the prayer, he would recite Surah Al-Sajda, the 32nd chapter of the Quran. And then when he finished, he would praise God uh, using seven names of God. And these are all names 
of God that are known from Islamic uh, tradition. Mm -hmm. So the whole uh, story is rather uh, uh, Islamic at its origin or Islamicized, even mm -hmm. if it was uh, taken uh, as a kernel from, from outside of the Muslim community. Mm -hmm. So, Dr. Shapir, this story isn't as fantastical as the other stories, I guess, because, you know, it's already a fantastic story, right? Jesus being resurrected in the Christian, um, in the Bible, right? It already seems fantastical to us. So when I read your description here, it just seems pretty ordinary to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, now, I, I wouldn't deny that, that Jesus raised a person who was completely dead and, you know, brought him back to, to life. But when the Quran says that Jesus was raising the dead back to life without giving any details, uh, we can start asking, what do you mean by dead? Do you mean dead by the standards of the day? Nowadays, we distinguish between brain dead and, um, you know, somebody may be clinically dead, um, meaning that their heart stopped. Um, nowadays, we have modern equipment to uh, test a person to see if the person is really dead, um, you know, and, and we don't declare the person totally dead until the person is brain dead. And then, too, there might be different definitions of brain death. Are you talking about uh, the neocortical functions? Or are you talking about uh, the death of the brain stem? And so on. So there, there are different definitions of death today. So we can ask, what definition of death are we talking about, like when the person was declared dead? Is it like in Mark's gospel where uh, the girl had, was on the point of death, they said, and then by the time he got there, uh, the girl is dead, uh, according to the uh, observations of the onlookers. Mm -hmm. and, and they're pleading with Jesus, uh, nothing to do now because the girl is already dead. That's their words. Those are their words. And then Jesus says to them, uh, the girl is not dead, she's only sleeping. Hmm. So are there, uh, you know, two different interpretations here? They think the girl is dead, but Jesus knows that there is a way to revive her. And she could be said to be only sleeping, either metaphorically, meaning that she's totally dead, even in Jesus's eyes. Uh, but Jesus uh, is saying she's only sleeping because he intends to wake her up. Mm -hmm. uh, or did he really mean that literally she is only sleeping, and, but he appears to be dead to mm -hmm. the onlookers, and he knows how to revive a person in that situation, of course, and he knows that by divine inspiration. God has taught him something like, uh, you know, CPR uh, ahead of its time. You know, nowadays it's very common for people to learn CPR, but in those days perhaps people didn't know. So one can interpret it in these different ways. One can say that the other narratives perhaps are exaggerations of an original core story, in which Jesus resurrected something like this, uh, like a girl in this situation. Uh, it, maybe the original core story was like that, and then uh, people stretched it. The boy was already on his way to his, uh, to his burial. Mm -hmm. Or uh, in the case of Lazarus, he was already buried, uh, and he was there for four days to the point that his sister could uh, protest that uh, he, his body is already smelling like, what's the point of trying to bring him back to the life? It's impossible almost. Um, but Jesus does it. So uh, we uh, which story does the Quran have in mind? A Muslim then has a, a wide variety to choose from. Uh, and uh, one can be inclined towards a more reasonable approach and choose the Markan story. Or one can be more uh, inclined towards fantastical stories and, mm -hmm. and pick the Johannine account of mm -hmm. Lazarus being raised back f from, from the dead after four days of being burial. And he comes out almost looking, uh, you know, wrapped in, in, in sheets like a mummy. Um, uh, so, so one has a choice. Mm -hmm. uh, but the tafsirs do not give us this wide array of choices because they include stories now which are really fantastical. So... Uh, previously, I mentioned a Dural Manthur uh, by Al Imam um, Suyuti. His uh, Dural Manthur is not translated. Uh, so most people are not aware, of uh, those who do not know Arabic and those who don't bother to read such a massive tafsir because who has the time, right? Um, then, you know, they're not familiar with these stories. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, a story in there goes that there was a king uh, who was uh, a tyrant to his people. And he had a son. And... Uh, uh, he um, called on Jesus to resurrect the boy because he heard of Jesus' amazing feet. Uh, but Jesus warned him, if I resurrect him, it won't be good for you. But he said, I don't care. I just want you to resurrect my son. So Jesus went ahead and resurrected the boy from the dead. Uh, and uh, now the, the people protested that, you know, the, the king is a tyrant. And now he's going to pass on the legacy to his son. And he's going to be a tyrant. How long are we going to live up to, with this? 
and they started the revolt. It was bad for the king. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Jesus left them alone. He went on his way. Uh, but uh, a, a traveling companion went with him um, on, on the condition that they will share their resources. Now, it turns out that Jesus had one loaf of bread. This companion had two. And this companion now became uh, sorrowful uh, that he had made this deal because he, you know, he would have to, instead of having two loaves in the end, he will end up with one and a half. Mm -hmm. So while Jesus slept, um, he, he started to eat one of the loaves and <laughs> Jesus uh, could hear the sound of his chewing. So Jesus asked him what's going on. He said, nothing. Jesus went back to sleep and he went back to eating till he finished the loaf. When Jesus asked him next morning, where's the loaf? He said, I don't know. So they went along and um, they came to a shepherd, uh, to, to, uh, yeah, and, and Jesus asked for one of the lambs. He was given, they slaughtered the lamb, ate the meat, kept the bones intact, wrapped them in a, in a leather um, binding. And then Jesus commanded the sheep and it came back to life, gave it back to the farmer. Jesus said to the man, you see this miracle from God, uh, so now tell me the truth, uh, who took the loaf? The guy said, I don't know. So they went along to another farmer. This is a, a herdsman. He took a calf uh, with the permission of the herdsman. And um, same story, brought the calf back to life, asked the man, okay, now tell me who took the loaf. After seeing this miracle as well, the man still denies any knowledge of the loaf. Uh, so they go to a town. And uh, the story is becoming long and drawn out now, but it's got, reaching a climax now. They go to a town and uh, Jesus um, uh, parts company with the man. But the man now wants to pretend that he has uh, the healing powers of Jesus. He forges a staff like that of Jesus and he goes about healing, well, pretending he can heal. And uh, there the king was ill. Uh, so he went to heal the king. And uh, he is applying his own methods. He hits the king with his staff <laughs> until the king dies. <laughs> so now he's trying to resurrect the king and he cannot. So the people now want to crucify him. So they put him up on a cross and uh, Jesus uh, hears about this. He comes to rescue his companion. And uh, even though this is a disagreeable companion, but nonetheless, Jesus is compassionate. Uh, he makes a deal uh, with the people if I, um, you know, um, uh, raise your king back to life, will you let the man go? So he did that. They got the man down. And then he went along with his companion now. They came to uh, find three uh, bricks. And Jesus turns the bricks into gold. So we have three uh, gold pieces now. And Jesus says, okay, so one for me, one for you, and the third one is for the guy who took the loaf. <laughs> so the guy said, uh, I took the loaf. <laughs> <laughs> so Jesus left him with the three. He said, okay, you can have them all three now. Jesus left him alone. And um, it, two uh, persons came uh, to rob him of his gold. But he said, let's not uh, do that. Let's share the gold. Okay, so one of them will go buy uh, food for the rest. And uh, the one who went to buy the food decided to poison the food. He brought the poisoned food to them. In the meantime, they thought better kill him and take all the gold to be shared between the two. And uh, eventually they killed him. Then they ate the food. They also died and the gold is left to nothing. It's a good, nice moral story in the end that you know, the gold of this world, not worth anything. And people die over gold for no good reason. Uh, but the whole story is fantastical, as you can see. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus as we, uh, you know, goes easily raising the dead, uh, dead sheep, dead calf, uh, dead king dead king's son, uh, you know, it, 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 it's, it's much more than we would expect from, from the Gospels. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll leave it at that, Dr. Shabir. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Our videos reach people all over the world. We hope you will seize the opportunity to share in the reward from God. Please support us today. <laughs>